Good morning, guys. We've got Come the center section. In. You're welcome to be in. And that section over there, we just ask that you sit in every other seat, okay? And then as you get settled, there's a gray card in the packet of information you received. You can start to fill that out for us, okay? We'll explain it in just a second. Come on down. Come on down. we got this whole center section and way over here as well. Please make sure you also have your masks on over your nose and mouth. Every other seat for me, guys and gals. Thank you. Are you scared of the front row? Too close? Not too close? Come on in, you guys. This whole section is open as well. I'm just asking every other seat, okay? Come on in. Come on in. Those of you that are coming in right now, if you want to funnel down to this section over here, that's an option as well. Every other seat for me. And as you get settled, if you want to start filling out that gray card in the packet you've received, that would be great. Those of you that are just starting to come in, if you want to come in on this side too, you can come in on this side. There we go. We just needed one ant to step out of the form. Every other seat for me. Come on down. Come on down. Come on in, guys. This section over here is open, too. Every other seat for me, okay? I don't bite. Come on in, every other seat. Come on in, girls, right down here, every other seat. Every other seat. And as you guys get settled, go ahead and get started on that gray note card included in the packet you received. Once you're seated, as you're waiting for us to get started, you can work on those gray cards. Please fill them out. They are used to share the images from graduation. You will each get a proof of your picture accepting your diploma. So go ahead and fill those gray cards out. Any seat's fine, just every other seat. Come on in, get settled. When you're finished, you're gonna pass the gray cards to the end of we'll your do aisle. We'll do, that. we'll do that in a little bit. But we'll, we'll wait a minute for that. We're just going to give it one more minute or so for any other folks that are coming in. But go ahead and fill out those gray cards for us. We'll talk to you more about that here in just a second. You'll have plenty of time. I'm going to give you more minutes in just a, a little while. Okay. All right. Good morning, guys. I'm going to have you pause with the gray cards um, so I can have your eyes up here. Um, we're going to give you time to fill those out here in a little bit. So if I could have your eyes up here. Thank you, guys. 
Um, all right, so just a couple things I want to talk to you about before I turn it over to Dr. Fuchs. Um, first off, the most important thing that you have to remember for graduation is to be on time. Because obviously if you're not here and we're walking out for graduation and you're not there, then you're going to miss out. So make sure that you are on time. The morning of graduation, we're going to have a walkthrough practice that will start at 7 a.m. So you want to be here for that. You'll meet out at the football field. That night, you'll want to be in the classroom. In the classroom by 7.15. That doesn't mean arrive at 7.15. That means be in your classroom that you're assigned to at 7.15 that night. So very, very, very important to understand. You know, you learned the most important thing about graduation back when you were in kindergarten, believe it or not. And what is that? How to walk in line. Because that's what you're going to do that night. You're going to follow the person in front of you all the way up through. So walking in line was an important skill you learned back in kindergarten. All right, so the uh, dress that night. It is important to understand... You need to dress appropriately. This is a very um, important ceremony. And uh, you want to treat it with the utmost res respect. So you want to wear a dress shirt, dress pants, dress shoes, ties, dresses, those type of things. You want to dress nice. One thing I would advise you of, those of you that choose to wear high heels, do not wear the pointy thin stilettos. Why? Because I have seen over my years where somebody was walking, you're walking in grass and you stick and then you get left behind. So you, we don't want that to happen to you. So not a good idea to wear stilettos that night. So just a, just a word of advice. All right, let's see. Uh, you want to make sure you make good choices. Now, here's the thing. I've been doing this for 16 years. Um, and over those years, we have had to tell students they are not graduating. Because they make poor choices. They're either making poor choices about their schoolwork and not getting all of their work in on time, and not earning the credits to walk in graduation. Or it could be students that are making poor choices in other areas. Pranks, disruptive things that will get them in trouble and have consequences. And believe it or not, we have had to meet with students over the years, the day of graduation, and say sorry you're not walking in the ceremony. Don't be one of those people. I want to see each and every one of you and hand each and every one of you a diploma that night. So don't be one of those people that does something that you think might be funny that'll get you in trouble. Don't do it. You can celebrate all you want after the fact, but don't do that. And, and also making good choices about what you partake of before the ceremony. If you come under the influence, you will not be able to walk in the ceremony either. And believe it or not, we do check these things. So don't be one of those people. And it is such a sad conversation that we have to have when we have to do that. Because a lot of you, I'm sure, have relatives and family members, have friends that are traveling miles and miles to come see this event. They want to see you walk across that stage as well. All right, so you want to be on time. You want to dress appropriate. You want to make good choices. You want to make sure you're passing all your classes. The other thing that you want to make sure that you do is I, I share with you a quick story. Um, when I was in um, a little guy, when I was a little guy, little tyke, I remember my dad um, got a new job, and he had been working there for a while, and 
and we went to see his new place of business. He was a pressman. He was a, uh, worked in a print shop. And I was so excited watching his excitement about showing us his place of business where he worked. And he was so excited showing us. And I remember the smells and, like it was yesterday and the sights and the machines and how cool it all was. And then we go to the car afterwards and my dad pulls out an envelope and hands it to my mom and I said, Dad, what's that? He says, that's my first paycheck for my new job. And, and I lost my mind. I was like, wait, Dad, you get to work here and you get paid? I thought that was the coolest thing ever. And that's kind of the, the excitement that I wish for you guys. That's the excitement I have coming to work every day, working with you guys. I hope, my hope for you, my wish for you, is that you find a job or a career where you get so excited to go to work every day that it's not work. It's fun. And you enjoy it. And it's not tedious. So that's my hope for you. And hopefully we've prepared you well for that next journey. One thing I want to encourage all of you, I made a mistake when I was in high school. I was not a good student. I struggled in school. And in those struggles, I had a lot of people that helped me to get through it and to graduate. I got better in school over the years, and I ended up getting my graduate degree, and then I, I am where I am today because of a lot of those people that helped me throughout my education. I regret when I was in high school that I didn't thank all of those people personally before I left. So what I've tried to do over the years, I've tried to reconnect with some of those people just to say thank you for helping me along the way. So I encourage you, don't make the mistake I made. Make sure you connect before you leave here with the teachers and the staff members that have helped you along the way. Because that's important. We care about you. We care, care about your journey. We want you to all be successful. And we work hard to get you to this point. And we're thankful for each and every one of you. Make sure that you say you're thankful thanks to those people that have helped you and that have made, made an impression on you over the years. That's important. All right, so I think that's all I need to say. Um, it's a big night. I'm so excited for you. Um, this is my last year as principal at Mountain View. Some of you, already, most of you already know that. I'm moving on to the district office. But I want to thank you guys for making my experience here at Mountain View so very, very special. Eight years, it's been wonderful, it, the time flies by, but you guys have made it a wonderful experience, so thank you guys. Turn it over now to Dr. Fuchs. Well, good morning, you guys. I have to tell you, this is super exciting for us because last year, as you know, our graduating class didn't have an opportunity to sit where you're sitting and they also didn't have an opportunity to walk the field like you're going to be able to do in just a few weeks. So this is the beginning of all of these end of the year celebrations. And I'm just super excited that we're at this point. It makes it all very real, which is exciting. So there are, as you can imagine, a lot of details associated with graduation. It's like putting on a huge wedding. And we want to make sure that we share um, all the things that are going to happen between now and then. Okay. Everything that I'm sharing with you is in the packet that you have been given. So after you walk out of here, please make sure that you are referring to that. Um, graduation day is the day that we all get to celebrate the last 13 years of hard work and perseverance that you have all invested in your education. That's a long time to be working towards a goal. And so it's an opportunity for us to celebrate you and we're excited to be able to do that. Um, of course, just like all the important things in your life, we try to capture all those memories for you. The gray card that we were talking to you about filling out as you came in is for the photographer. So what will happen is, as part of the ceremony, as you walk through to pick up your diploma, 
um, they will take pictures of every single student and they will send the proofs to the information you provide on that gray card. You then have the option of whether or not you choose to purchase pictures from them or not, okay? But they will send proofs to every one of you. So I'm gonna give you two minutes real quick to finish up that gray card and send it to the outside aisle, or I guess it's the inside here. We've got Ms. Velarde and Mr. Robert, so they're gonna collect those cards from you. So fill those out for me and pass those in. Make sure you're uh, writing clearly so that they can send it to the right address and information. And if you're just getting started on that card, that's okay. You can still hand it in as you walk out, but we do want to make sure we collect those from you today. Okay, so don't leave with them. That's an important piece. Just a reminder as I'm looking around, please make sure you are wearing your masks over your nose and mouth while you're inside. I know we're kind of over the mask conversation, but I need everybody masked up when you're inside. All right, so I'm gonna go on with the presentation. You guys can, of course, continue to fill out that card, okay? All right. So there are, is a whole list of events that are happening between now and the end of the year, and I say that like it's a long time. We are under four weeks here, okay? So we're really looking at a, at a short timeline. It just feels like it's a, a long way away. So. Uh, originally, we had planned for tomorrow evening to have the Senior Sunset Celebration along with the dance and food trucks and things like that, but the dance and the food truck part wasn't a real big hit. So we've canceled that portion, but we're still doing the Senior Sunset portion on Friday evening, and the football field will be available to you. So anyone who wants to attend, bring a chair, bring a blanket, whatever you want to do, hang out on the field for a half hour or so as the sun goes down and enjoy time with your peers. Um, Again, it's not required. It's just an event that we're opening up the campus for. Caps and gowns are going to be delivered in the courtyard on May 12th. Okay, so make sure you bring your ID with you. If you are wearing a cap and gown that originally belonged to an older sibling or another family member, and you only need that 2021 tassel and the medallion, that is, was it 17 or 19? 70 hours, okay. Perfect, I just wanna make sure. And then um, you can pick those up on the day of cap and gown delivery. You don't have to pay for those ahead of time. Of course, we do need to collect back your computers. So if you're an in-person student, obviously you all who are sitting here are, that will be on May 13th, which means you're gonna be taking your final exams paper pencil, okay? And then I know we're recording this for those who are um, remote. Remote students are gonna be doing their senior device return on May 19th. We have baccalaureate on Sunday, May 16th, which is kind of like the, I guess it's kind of a religious side of graduation celebrations. It's completely um, optional if you choose to go. It's being held at uh, Central Christian Church right down the street, 6 p.m. Tickets are free, but you do need to have tickets, okay, because it's limited seating, and those will be available in the bookstore starting tomorrow. Your final exams look a little bit different than the students in other grade levels because you are not going to be on campus for school on May 20th. You'll be on campus for graduation stuff, but not for classes. So on May 17th and or the 18th, depending on how your teachers have chosen to do it, those are two regular bell schedule days, you may be taking two different parts of your final exam. So that's why we gave them two days. You'll be taking final exams for periods one, two, and three on the 17th and or the 18th. And then on the 19th 
is the block schedule day for all students, and that is periods A, four or five, depending on when you have lunch, six and seven. Okay, because on May 20th, we've got you pretty well booked. The day starts at 7 a.m. out on the field for rehearsal. Rehearsal is mandatory because we want to make sure that you know what you're doing for graduation evening, and it will be at this event that your guest tickets are given to you. So you have to make sure that you're there so that you've got your tickets for mom, dad, and whatever family is coming with you, okay? And then the evening of May 20th, you're going to report to your assigned rooms, and I'll talk about that here in just a second, by no later than 7.15. And that means you are in the room ready to go at 7.15, not parking your car or walking to the classroom at 7.15. When you show up in, at, in those rooms, you are not to have anything with you. Your keys should be handed over to parents or a friend who's attending for you. Um, no smartwatches, no smartphones, no electronics of any sort because one, we don't want them to get lost or broken, and two, we don't want any disruptions um, to the ceremony itself, okay? And then our boosters are hosting that evening a senior celebration for you um, at Fat Cats, and you've got a flyer for that in your packet this morning, so that's those are ticketed, and you want to make sure you get tickets for that as well, if that's something you're interested in. That's 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. Okay, the graduation line list will be posted in Canvas by Monday, May 17th, and you want to pay close attention to those lists. The reason it's not until the 17th is because we want to go through and try to make sure that those lists are as accurate as possible. Okay, and again, Please report to those rooms without any electronics whatsoever. There won't be any place for you to keep them either. The graduation program is also listed on the flyer that you have, the blue flyer. So this is just an idea of what the order of the program is. It's really important to know that we will be announcing the names of every student, okay? And until Mr. Milbrandt comes back to the podium at the end of this ceremony and says, something like, it is my pleasure to present the graduating class of 2021, you stay right where you are, okay? So we wanna make sure that everybody stays on the field until the very end of the program. Sometimes we think it's over, but it's not just yet. We've got student speakers, speakers from administration, and speakers from district leadership who are all gonna come and honor you on that day, okay? Dress code, so Mr. Milbrandt touched on this as well. This is a special event we want to make sure that we are dressed to impress slacks dresses skirts ties with shirts okay um, dress shoes no jeans no flip-flops no tennis shoes but again i echo what mr milbrandt said because i've walked in weddings and events that are in the grass you do not want to wear stiletto heels because you will get stuck okay so just keep that in mind when you're choosing um, we do not allow students to decorate their um, cap, okay? If you come with a decorated cap, we will gladly exchange it for a blank one for you. Okay? And in that same vein, we don't uh, allow graduates to wear anything that is not part of the Mountain View cap and gown tassel with the exception of an NHS stole. So if you are in the NHS and you have your stole, you may wear that. Um, if you are provided with your gold tassel for your cap uh, with a GPA of 3.5 or above, you may wear that. Uh, but no other additional adornment or decoration can be worn um, on over your cap or gown or under your cap and gown. So I know some families um, give lays at graduation and students sometimes like to wear those under their gowns. Um, that will not be allowed. Um, so make sure anything aside from your clothing and your cap and gown and shoes are left with your parents. Everything else should be left with a family member or someone else because we will confiscate it and then you'll have to come and find a time to come back and get it and, and we don't want to do that and you don't want to do that. So make sure you are abiding by the dress code provided. Yep. And that being said, you will have plenty of time for pictures with your family afterward. So if that's something that your family members wanna bring with them and keep with them in the stands, and then you, you put those on for pictures, by all means, okay? One of the goals of a dress code and the cap and gown and everything is for it to be uniform just like any formal uh, ceremony would be, okay? It's all part of the pomp and circumstance of an event like that. 
Mm -hmm. um, every student's name will be read. And again, once the final name is read, Mr. Milbrandt still has the honor of presenting you as the graduating class. So we want to make sure that you just stay put until the very end. And it'll be very clear when it's time to throw up your, your caps and celebrate. Um, what, what we do suggest, and thanks, Ms. Velarde, for reminding us at the last presentation, is because you won't have your phones with you, you will want to prearrange with your family a place to meet after the ceremony is over because it's going to be crazy and it's impossible to see over thousands of heads as you're trying to navigate your way through um, the field. So definitely decide on a place where you want to meet your friends and family after the ceremony so that you can meet up with them and take all those pictures that you want to. Now, I will tell you, this is the part that I hate, the, like, that I dislike the, the most because I'm one of those people I like to focus on the positive. But there are some things, unfortunately, that we have to explicitly say, you cannot do this, you cannot do that. Okay, and here are the lists of those things, right? Possession or consumption of anything other than water, soda, tea, etc. And you know what I'm talking about, right? Um, in the spirit of not having any distractions or disruptions to the ceremony, we do not allow beach balls, balloons, air horns, fog horns, anything that could possibly create a distraction or a disruption to the ceremony. Okay, so keep that in mind. We want to hear everybody's name announced. Every family wants to hear their loved one's name announced, and we want to be respectful of that. Okay? We need to ensure that if you are walking that stage, you are walking that stage because you have fulfilled all the state-mandated requirements for a graduating high school student. So that's part of what we do, not even before we post that list on the 17th, but even after that. We're still looking for those final grade postings from teachers to ensure that all of our seniors have passed all of classes that they are required to for graduation and that you're meeting those requirements. The other piece is that fees and fines need to be paid before you receive your diploma. So what I would highly suggest is that you make it a point to go down to the bookstore at some point before the 20th and make sure that you don't have any outstanding fees or fines on your account. If you do, take care of those. If you've got big fees and fines, don't avoid it because you're scared. Talk to Ms. Harwood down in the bookstore and make a payment plan. You can come and talk to me or Mrs. Laybeck and we can help you navigate some of that. I don't want anybody not to graduate because of a financial hardship, but we do want to make sure that your course fees and all of those other things have been paid before we hand you your diploma. Okay? Part of what we do at the practice that morning is we announce the names of students who still have fines and fees to be paid. So I, would, I, I don't know about you, I'd rather not have my name read out loud if I can avoid it. Okay? And we ask that guests, may, that guests not enter the field until the ceremony is over. Okay? And again, make a plan of where you want to meet your people. Okay? We realize that with four tickets per student, that leaves a lot of family members and friends not able to attend in person. And so we will be live streaming the graduation on the website. Um, in the past, we've had the auditorium open for anyone who is didn't e either couldn't get down to the field or didn't want to go down to the field, but because of our construction plans, that will not be a possibility this year. So everything will be live streamed, and then the senior video will be available on the Student Council website for your access and download if you'd like. Okay. So here are those last last things, right? Like if you had a checklist of all the things you need to make sure you take care of in order to walk in that final ceremony, here it is, right? And it all boils down to taking care of business and making good choices. If there's an inkling in your mind that something you're planning is going to get you in trouble, I would say don't do it. 13 years is a really long time to invest hard work, hours, commitment, money, effort to lose the opportunity to walk at the very last minute. And that would be silly. Okay, so please think about that. I know pranks are intended to be fun but they don't always end up that way, and I would hate to see someone lose the opportunity to walk at graduation because of something that was silly. Again, make sure that you are taking care of your academic commitments and passing all of your classes. Very important. Make sure you complete all the requirements for your ECAPS. If you have MDLP classes or grad point recover, credit recovery classes, you have got to make sure you fulfill those requirements. My understanding is that the deadline for MDLP is next week, May 6th, right? May that 6th. That is correct. 
Okay, May 6th, in my mind, seems very far away. It is next Thursday. Yeah. So here we are. We're right there at the end. So take care of that business. Um, your career exploration, if you're doing career exploration for credits, make sure you meet the deadline to submit all of those things because it all needs to be reviewed to ensure that you've met those requirements. Again, pay your fines and your fees. And this is just um, a note for you guys. As you're preparing for your next chapter, if you need a, um, an official transcript, that request has to go through parchment, which can be accessed on the counseling portion of our website. That's not something that a counselor can do for you. It's a request you have to submit, and then they send it out, okay? Um, unofficial transcripts you can access on your student portal, so that's not a big deal. But official transcripts, once your final grades are posted, have to go through parchment, okay? And just to be very clear, all of these things need to be taken care of in order for you to be able to graduate. So if you have any questions about any of that stuff, your counselor is your go-to person to confirm, reconfirm, reconfirm that you have met all of the requirements for graduation. Okay? And if you find yourself approaching these deadlines, whether it be May 6th or uh, May 20th, and you have made a mistake, you've missed a deadline, the worst thing that you can do is just say, okay, well, I guess I just missed it. Uh, please reach out to your counselor, your grade level administrator, someone on this campus, so that if there is anything we can do to support you and get you over that finish line, we can do that. Um, please communicate with us, please talk to us, and, and we'll help you. And your counselor would be your first stop. Right? Mrs. Laybeck and I work together for graduation because I'm over you guys as seniors, but Mrs. Laybeck oversees all things graduation. So we're happy to help and support and, and do whatever you need us to do. So don't be afraid to come and have a conversation with us. There is one more thing that I need to say out loud, and quite frankly, I'm a little tired of the topic, but that is the topic of masks. Okay? So let's talk about that real quick because in the paperwork you received, it says on that blue piece of paper that masks are required at graduation. And that was true at the time that those papers were printed, okay? So as you know, Mesa Public Schools came out with a new mask, an updated mask policy. This week, masks are still required indoors and outdoors they're highly recommended. Beginning next week, masks are highly recommended both indoors and outdoors, but not required, okay? So what does this mean? This means as of this very moment, right now, that masks are not required for graduation. But there is a conditional statement that's kind of attached to that. The district continues to monitor COVID data. They could change that policy even the day of graduation based on how our COVID numbers look. So what we're doing is we are going to provide Toro Nation masks to all of our staff and graduating seniors. So you have those. If we end up having to wear them for graduation. If we don't end up having to wear them for graduation, then great, you have another thing to keep with your collection and memories of how crazy your senior year was, okay? But we will let you know the morning of graduation practice where we stand with the mask requirement. At this point, graduates nor guests nor staff members are required to wear masks. That being said, everyone has the right to wear a mask if they prefer to do so. And that's for everybody. That also being said, rather than doing handshakes, we are going to be doing fist bumps. I know that sounds silly, but typically we, hand, we shake hands with every senior that comes across the stage. We don't want to miss out on congratulating you and celebrating you, but we want to do so in a little bit of a safer manner. So we're going to be doing fist bumps. If you don't feel comfortable with that, that's fine too. That's totally within your right and you don't have to do that. Okay? Okay, so I want to open it up to questions that you feel apply to the whole group, and then Ms. Laybeck and I are going to stay afterwards to answer any individual questions that you have that might be specific to your circumstances. So what questions do you guys have that you think will impact everybody? Yes, ma'am. Attendance is a state requirement, so uh, we have to uh, apply the rules that are state statute fairly and appropriately. We want everyone to have a chance at credit. Did I answer your question? 
The answer to your question is make sure you're going to class and take care of your responsibilities, and then the rest is a moot point. How's make that? sure you pass your classes. Make sure you pass your classes. Okay. All right, what other questions do you have? Yes, sir. Hey, guys, we can't hear the question if everyone's still talking. I'm sorry, say that a little louder. I'll leave that up to Mr. Milbrandt. I'm sure he'd be happy to shake your hand if that's what you'd really like. Please keep in mind, you might be only shaking one person's hand, the principal's hand, but that principal is shaking the hand of, would be then shaking the hand of everyone. So that's the complicating factor. Yeah. Yes, sir. There's another question. This is a good question. The question is, the morning of graduation at practice, do you need to be in the dress code? And the answer is no. You come casual. Okay, for practice, you guys are going to go directly to the field. For call time at 7.15 that evening, you're going to go to your assigned classrooms in dress code. It will be posted in Canvas by Monday, May 17th. Yep. Yes, ma'am. Practice, you go straight to the field. That night, you go to your classroom. So for, let me say it one more time, because I know that there's we a lot of details. Practice does actually start in the classroom. Oh. <laughs> well, we're going to want to clarify that, because that's practice not what we've been saying. Practice starts in the classrooms, because we actually practice the processional out to the field. OK, thank so you that you for know that. where to walk, where to all those. OK. So that's my bad. Now I know. Yes, ma'am. If you go to EBIT the day that caps and gowns are being delivered, anything that wasn't picked up is going to go to the bookstore and you can pick it up there. Yep, very good question. No, it is not. So you but can go on the website, our school. You can go on our school website. Are you listening? Because you asked the question. Okay. So you can go on our school website, click on the Balfour link, and you can order the cap and gown that way. But don't wait. Do it sooner rather than later. You guys have good questions. Yes, sir. Tassel. So the tassel comes with the cap and gown if you have ordered that. Um, if you're using a sibling's uh, cap and gown, then you'll want to buy that tassel for 2021 and the medallion, and that'll be $17, and you can get that at uh, the, the cap and gown pickup on the 12th. Otherwise, you don't need, as long as you're in dress code, you don't need anything additional. And we prefer you don't have anything additional. Mm -hmm. It's That's about an hour and a half. The question was, what time will practice end in the morning? It's about an hour and a half, and then you guys go. You don't go to classes on the 20th. So you have the day to get ready, get your hair done, your nails done, whatever else you want to do. Then you'll pick it up on May 12th during lunch at that table. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, sir. The gold tassel, so if you earned a 3.5 GPA or higher, then the gold tassel. You'll get that from Miss Cutler in the office. She is our registrar, and she'll provide those for you. It's going to be in the courtyard. There's a, there'll be a table, so you'll see. So we have to wait for, we'll for grades to be pretty close to posted because obviously it's based on your GPA. So um, we should be able to provide those. Um, my guess would be the, the same time that cap and gowns are issued. Yes, ma'am. If you ordered a cap and gown um, through Balfour, yes, the medallion does come with. If you aren't ordering a cap and gown and you're just getting the tassel, it's that $17 for both those items. Correct. You have a 21, 2021 tassel? Then the medallion comes with that. You only have to purchase the medallion separately. Like, 
if you're if you didn't order a cap and gown and you're just buying your tassel for for this year a lot of our students have siblings that have graduated before them and so they wear a siblings cap and gown and they just purchase the tassel and medallion to wear at the ceremony yes so last year those were provided and donated by the arizona education foundation um, I don't know if we are going to have them this year. There was discussion about it. If they are ordered, uh, we will get them out to you. You keep your existing tassel and you get a gold tassel in addition if you've met that GPA requirement. Any other questions? Um, so this is a, a important and formal occasion. Um, so you should be dressed um, appropriately, but we we are not measuring skirt lengths. We believe that at this point, you're ready to go out into the world. You can make that decision on your own. <laughs> now, please make sure that you're abiding by the guidelines that were provided and are in your packets. Um, I think one of the questions we got a lot the last time we had graduation two years ago uh, was about rompers or jumpsuits, if those are acceptable. Yes, those are. Any other questions? All right, head back to your second hour class. Make sure all those gray cards are turned in. If you have a specific question that only applies to you, feel free to come 